uh, for those of you who don't know me, uh, I'm Paul Lee. I'm a partner here at Light Bank in Chicago. And uh, one of our first investments uh, was Belly. So before we get into Belly, I wanted to spend a minute uh, asking Logan about his background. He's actually got a phenomenal background. And I actually think beyond the tech, this is actually the interesting part of this piece. So with that, uh, would love for you to walk us through your background, starting from Redbox all the way through you know, $10 million funded company. Yeah, sure. I think in terms of my uh, entrepreneurial kind of tech career, uh, it probably started even before Redbox. I, uh, I was an entrepreneurship major because I, I, you know, I, I guess at the time I, I didn't know I should just, and if you want to be an entrepreneur now, I should have probably just done computer science. Uh, so as an entrepreneurship major, I started with a, a company in San Francisco called Pay by Touch. It was a company that uh, was trying to change the way the world pays. Uh, pay with your fingerprint, biometric technology. So register a fingerprint, register a checking account, you could pay with your fingers before iPhones or mobile payments, anything in that space. And, and it was uh, something that was considered incredibly advanced, beyond kind of, a, you know, ahead of its time. Uh, that company raised $350 million and crashed in two and a half years. Uh, and from there I went on to Redbox, a company that, uh, you know, was automated retail. It was a, a glorified kiosk that was uh, renting DVDs, uh, physical media. And that company went on in a couple of years to become a multi-billion dollar company uh, with 35,000 locations and a couple million rentals a day. So I think um, those two experiences in terms of the, how we leverage technology really sort of guided my, my perspective on, uh, on how technology is used today. So, so you're at Redbox and you get an itch. What, what was going through your mind there when, you, when we, we started talking? Uh, well, with Redbox, I was in an entrepreneurial role. I was, able to, I was able to work in all different departments and sort of guide myself towards this entrepreneurial career, uh, able to be in, you know, in marketing, strategy, analytics, uh, and then in, in innovation, building new businesses. Uh, but you know, once that company became large, I knew I wanted to get into something smaller. Uh, and you know, at the time, it was really uh, you know, being close to the entrepreneur, entrepreneurial community, it was, it was really about uh, kind of understanding what problem would I want, that I wanted to solve. You know, I think early in my career I thought, you know, you're always waiting for the right idea. Um, and so I, I kept waiting and waiting and waiting for this idea. Uh, and then I, I finally decided, well, you know what, um, screw it, I don't have an idea yet. I'm just going to go try and start something. So it was about, uh, you know, identifying kind of problems, finding a problem, finding a solution, and uh, understanding kind of the trends and staying on top of trends. And it was really, you know, uh, the trends being local, being things right. like online to offline, right. or offline to online, uh, things like marketplaces and platforms. So those were a lot of kind of the guiding principles that uh, forced me to kind of move my, move my hand and, and just test out the entrepreneurial space. So, so talk a little bit about the mechanic. It's great, we're talking about technology spaces, but uh, do you recall how we set up our first meeting? Do you remember that? Uh, our first meeting with Lightbank, yeah. with you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do, through Twitter. Yeah. So I, I think that's interesting from leveraging technology perspective. Logan actually randomly tweeted out at Lightbank and at me and we said, come on in next week. And so Logan comes in the following week and then what happened at that meeting? Uh, that meeting, I, uh, so that meeting with Lightbank, I was, I was pitching an idea uh, that uh, I'd been working on that I'd pitched around town quite a bit. And uh, I was pitching you and uh, some of the other analysts there at Lightbank and everyone hated it. They just hated my idea, but they started to show me some of their Portfolio companies, we started talking about spaces, again, trends, started talking about loyalty, started talking about platforms and marketplaces. Uh, and that's when Brad Keywell uh, and Eric Lefkowski walked in. Uh, they walked and then Brad into the said room. what to you? They walked into the room and, and heard me talking about some of the, uh, some of the platforms, some of the companies looking at wireframes, uh, executing on different kind of designs and how we build. Uh, Brad stared across the room at me uh, for about three minutes, didn't say a word, didn't blink. And then I think the first words he spoke were, uh, when can you start? So fast forward, uh, you, you launch Belly and you raise $10 million from arguably one of the leading venture capital firms in the world. So with that, tell us about Belly. Uh, so Belly is a digital loyalty platform. So we work with small, medium-sized businesses to create custom and unique loyalty programs. Uh, we give businesses the, all the tools that they need. We put an iPad in store. Uh, they operate off of an HTML5 app that we've built. Uh, we customize the program for them. Uh, and then we give customers the ability to have either one physical card or they can use our app and they can use it as their loyalty program at all of our locations. So over 3,000 places in the U.S. And that, that hits upon a recurring theme. I mean, uh, we see a lot of technology um, being leveraged in Silicon Valley, very advanced technologies. 
Talk to me a little bit about this notion of offline to online and, and how small merchants look at that differently. Yeah, one of the things we're trying to do with our technology is, is create or essentially level the playing field for small, medium-sized businesses. We're trying to inject technology into a place that has traditionally been a completely offline experience. So you know, the, the idea of going to uh, your local baker uh, and buying a, a cupcake has always been completely offline. And what we're trying to do is, is try and bring that experience and, and make it digital. Uh, and not just digital for the sake of injecting technology, but in order to help solve a problem, uh, to create a better user experience, to uh, provide more data and analytics, uh, benefits for the consumer in terms of uh, you know, additional coupons or value, uh, using technology for small businesses to help businesses create better relationships. So leveraging kind of uh, current aspects of tech and very forward-thinking tech uh, to, to try and create more real life experiences in store. And, and that all sounds wonderful on paper, but how are, you, how are you convincing merchants to do that? I mean, is it through a website? Are you contacting them directly? Like, how is that working? Uh, with Belly, so we, we expand through, uh, you know, I think what you would consider traditional channels. I mean, we have a sales organization, um, but I think the, the main thing that, you know, we focus on is, uh, you know, we try and build technology for the consumer uh, and be sure that we're selling that to merchants. And so, um, you know, we work with merchants uh, to create a platform that is technology for them that they would have otherwise never had access to uh, and create a user experience for the consumer uh, that creates demand on the merchant side. So talk a little bit more about that, you know, in terms of culture within Belly and how you guys got started. I mean, I remember when it was you and two young sales guys uh, calling everyone on the planet. Um, 20, 30 calls an hour, mm -hmm. and how that's expanded and how you're taking this technology. Like, t talk a little bit about your culture as it relates to technology to the merchant. Well, we try and really understand the merchant. So we spend a lot of time in stores. We spend a lot of time with business owners. We spend a lot of time with consumers. I think, you know, one of the things that we're trying to do is, is we're a technology company, um, but we're building technology that is, uh, that is for today. And so, you know, I, I think one of the things... So expand that, on that a little bit. When you yeah. say it's for today as opposed to what? Well, so what I mean by that is, you know, I think there's, there's a lot of technology that right now, uh, in building a technology company, I think uh, it's as important to understand what you don't do as, to, as, as what you do. Um, there's so much technology available. There's so many features, products. There's so many things you can do. Um, but you, you, one of the important aspects is deciding, you know, what will be and narrowing that level of focus. I think of uh, innovation and technology as, I think of technology as a blend of, building new products as a blend of like, innovation and compliance. Compliance being uh, not, not settling for any sort of status quo, but, but using today's technology to build products that people today want to use. Um, in, you know, I think consumers today, they, they have access to so much information. They have access to so many products. And so you know, there's, this, there's this constant struggle between uh, creating kind of what's next right. uh, and what people want to use today. And when I say compliance, what I mean is uh, cr using technology to solve a current problem, but solving it in the context of people's lives. Right. So how they use technology today, uh, how you can reduce friction, uh, how you can uh, make a current experience that they're having easier, uh, and, and using that to, to enhance something that they're right. already doing. So translate that in like a real world example, like products that you're, you, you thought about as a team and then decided that might be a little bit too forward for the merchant. Like, can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so you know, for us, uh, there's a lot of things that we're leveraging uh, in terms of like today's technology to try to make some things easier. Um, you know, we have 3,000 iPads that we have in deployment in small, medium-sized businesses. And that becomes uh, you know, obviously very difficult to manage and it becomes difficult to, to update and to, to add new features. So you know, one of the things that we would try and do every time we try to add a feature, work with a business to be able to, you know, to skin the iPad for a different vertical. A coffee shop wanted X, Y, or Z, and a, a dog boutique wanted something different or unique. Um, we had, this, we had a, a challenge being able to ask stores or merchants to kind of update their iPad or you know, do work on it. So one of the things that we went out and built was uh, we, we took our iPad app in store and transitioned that all to HTML5. So uh, typically, most tablet-based technologies uh, right now are, are in iOS mm -hmm. or in Android. Uh, we built all, everything in, in HTML5, which gave us the ability to push updates and push technology uh, immediately to all of our locations, uh, to A-B test in certain places, 
uh, in order to, uh, to, to make changes to certain segments of the businesses. Right. So uh, using the, the newest and kind of cutting edge technology to solve a current problem. So let me frame this question in the context of you know, where we are geographically. I think uh, LightBank thinks about businesses sometimes in the same way that you do, which is technology is really neat and very interesting, but yeah. frankly not all that useful. Talk a little bit about your roots in Chicago and how your company might be different if it was based in Silicon Valley. Well, you know, I think for us, um, th there's these constant conversations about, you know, what each region or, uh, you know, Silicon Valley versus Chicago or versus other places. I think truthfully, you can build a great technology company. You can build a great company anywhere. Uh, but I think there's obvious benefits of certain areas or certain regions that if you're going to be building a company in a certain place, you want to take advantage of and you want to try and leverage. You know, some of the things that Chicago is good at is, uh, you know, what, what people here say building real businesses. Uh, which is, you know, uh, current technology that you can sell, uh, leverage kind of the workforce that we have in Chicago, uh, leveraging, uh, you know, all of the, the kind of Fortune 500 companies uh, that are based here uh, and leveraging, you know, um, things like uh, building a sales force, having actual like ownership of hardware, uh, providing physical cards, things that we do with Belly that Silicon Valley companies wouldn't necessarily consider. Uh, they're, they're hard problems to solve, being able to manage physical assets, provide physical loyalty cards, things that are, you know, seem sort of kind of to today. Right. Uh, but they're, they solve a problem for consumers uh, in like today, you know, we think about it, I think, we're not just trying to create technology that's interesting to TechCrunch, we're trying to, solve, you know, build technology that's interesting to uh, a mom who's taking, you know, her kids uh, for ice cream after a soccer game in Milwaukee. And it looks like I'm getting the signal to wrap up here. Any words of advice for potential entrepreneurs that are thinking about leaving a company like Redbox and taking the entrepreneurial leap? Yeah, do it. Um, absolutely. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I think, the, you know, uh, th this week is based on ideas. Uh, and ideas are phenomenal, but it all comes down to actually taking the leap and execution. And so, you know, whether you're in a big company, whether you're in a small startup, it all comes down to, you know, taking action uh, and going out and building something. So, you know, whatever that idea is, talk to people, connect with people this week while you're here, pitch them, uh, get people to hear you out, but start building, just always be moving forward. Awesome, thank you. Cool, Appreciate thank it. you.